The south of England is not the most obvious place for understanding compressional tectonics. But there is an exception, the Wessex Basin. We're going to visit some classic localities that have attracted British geologists at least since the 1850s. But the area is also a major honeypot for tourists. Visitors come for the rock architecture and the beaches. But this area is known now as the Jurassic Coast, a World Heritage Site for its paleontology and globally important stratigraphic locations. But our mission lies in the structural geology. So I'm down on the south coast of England in the county of Dorset, coming to look at inversion tectonics. Now the idea of base inversion is quite long standing and goes way back. And it relates to the idea of rocks that were once basinal now being elevated to make hills. And there's really nowhere better to demonstrate it than here. Behind me, those cliffs down by the sea, that's the Kimmeridge clay a basinal deposit. And along the coast here, the Kimmeridge clay forms these rotten cliffs at the bottom. And the top white limestone there, well, that's the Portland stone, a very famous building stone. These are Jurassic rocks, lifted up out of their basin to make high ground. So, perhaps unwisely, I've chosen a sunny bank holiday weekend to come to the area. Along with hundreds of others. The Jurassic Coast has information for visitors that tells of past environments and its inhabitants, explain the geological underpinnings of the landscape. Though the structural explanations are rather rudimentary. The sea cliffs include some of the most photographed structures anywhere, which were intrigued geologists for over 150 years. Why are there folds here so far from any mountain range? Well, let's look at the structure, starting here at Lulworth Cove. These rocks are tipped on end, dipping steeply inland, that's to the north. So let's sketch a cross section. We've got the upper Jurassic, including the cliff forming Portland beds and then some softer ground, which includes the lower Cretaceous, all the way up to the chalk. Collectively, these form a monocline with an anticlinal hinge to the south, now eroded away and out to sea. So the chalk downlands that overlook Lulworth are the northern limb of this major fold, a monocline facing north. the chalk crops out as this major ridge line. It forms a natural rampart to an area to the south called Purbeck and it has long held strategic importance. An erosion gap holds a famous Norman castle later destroyed in the English Civil War as it formed a royalist stronghold. So the landscape and history are intimately linked to the geology. But to really see what's going on, we need to look below sea level, get insights from seismic imagery and put together a cross section. A rich array of 2D seismic profiles is available through the Ucoggle portal. These cross a major fault under the monocline, the Purbeck Fault. Along with many others, John Underhill and Susan Patterson interpret a thick Jurassic section at depth to the south of this fault, continuing below the sea, 
compared to the thinner section to the north of the fault. So there was a Jurassic basin to the south, now uplifted by reactivation on the bounding Purbeck Fault. The Lulworth Banks anticline contains the uplifted Jurassic strata. So because of reactivation of the Purbeck Fault, it's uplifted its basinal rocks and its hanging wall, so we get to see these Jurassic strata, the Kimmeridge clay, and we can get to study a really important petroleum source rock. So the reason that we know so much about the subsurface structure here is because of the exploration and development of the oil fields here, which not only uh, give us borehole information, but also seismic. And it's this seismic section that tells us about the structure of the inversion structures here. So that's the large scale structure. What about those folds? the so-called Lulworth Crumple. So let's bring in some structural concepts. Let's start with the fold geometry. The limbs go long, short, long. And this asymmetry defines a vergence. So the folds here in stair hole, they verge that way, back over the anticline, or up the monocline at least. Let's look to see what's going on. We'll just switch views and go to look for the other side of stair hole over here. So on the back wall there, we can see those thin bedded layers thrusting back up the monocline. So that's the same sense of vergence as we've just seen in the folds. So structures here, back thrusting, pushing material back over the steep limb of this inversion monocline. Returning back to the other wall of stair hole, these beds contain lots of little thrusts. Collectively, they thicken up the package. These structures are located along the Purbeck Fault. Lateral shortening, buttressing, before these rocks were then pushed up and over into the monocline. So the structure here starts as a half garden, sealed stratigraphically by Cretaceous rocks, including the thick chalk. The Purbeck Fault reactivates after the chalk deposited in tertiary times. So the structure here isn't just simply about movement and reactivation of the Purbeck Fault. There's more distributed deformation as well, and that's a feature of inversion tectonics. So let's just look at the damage this causes to the chalk in the steep limb. So in this steep limb of chalk, well that chalk is highly shattered and brecciated. Intense fracturing as the chalk has been folded into the monocline of the Purbeck area. And the brecciated chalk has been cut by northward directed shears. So the fracturing predates these little thrusts. And now let's represent that on our sketch cross section.
Finally, let's look at some curious structures in the Kimmeridge clay, well south of the Purbeck Fault. Well, the Kimmeridge clay contains thinner beds of limestone, well, actually, dollar stones. Looking down on one of these beds, the foreshore reveals a polygonal pattern of ridges and little thrust faults, seen as these hummocks on the rocky platform. Well, sediments, as they bury and turn into rocks, experience volume changes. You'll be familiar with that, with the drying out of muddy paths like this, where you get these polygonal cracks opening up. But it can also go the other way and generate contraction structures. Let's hold the picture and trace out a ridge. This forms by contraction from all sides. So this bed, while confined laterally, expanded in all directions. As there's nowhere to go sideways, the bed crumples up on itself, making the ridges. Because the deformation shows this radiating pattern, it's very unlikely to be tectonic in origin, but rather due to diagenesis, probably due to the volume increase caused by dolomitization of original limestone beds. So that's a quick visit to Purbeck and its structural geology, some tectonic and some not. Maybe next time I'll avoid coming on a bank holiday. <laughs>